Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you. Please invite your friends and let us have a good time together for today. Uh, before we start, I see some comment from Mohammedan. They come, especially when I am not live on air and they post comments. And their comment, I find it hilarious. Uh, we have somebody, uh, his name is the seventh or the seventh day, something like that. And he is saying the God of the Bible says our order killed even babies. I find it very stupid when a human being, he claimed to be a human, yet he don't go and read the chapter or read the history of that story. And if we ask him, did they kill the babies? He will not have an answer. And why they did that, if they did that? He have no answer. Because simply he take a text and he tried to play with it and say, look, look what he's saying. My friend, in the year 2020, you yourself, you kill babies. When you bomb an airplane over a city full of people, aren't you killing babies? So you can do it, but they cannot do it. If you go in the Bible, you will see, the Bible say clearly, the same as they did to us. The same as did to us. So everything in the Bible is, you see, it's not a secret that the Jews believe in the law of Moses, eye for an eye. Eye for an eye. And nations around the Jews, they used to come, slaughter them, kill them, enslave them, and smash the head of their babies. So a person who hate Christianity or Judaism, he will say to you, in the book of Psalms, it says, size the, your infant and dash them against the rocks. This is a prayer. It's not God talking. However, but why this guy even saying that? Why he is a praying such a prayer? It sounds like something very evil. But if they smash the head of his babies, do you blame him? O daughter of Babylon, doomed to destroy destruction, blessed is he who repay you as you have done to us. So this is how they take history out of context and they try to play with it. Like now, the Muslims, they take our churches and they convert them to a mosque. What if one day we take the Kaaba and we convert it to a church? They will not remember what the Muslim did. They will remember that we did that. So it's okay for the Muslim to take our churches, convert them to the mosque, but it's not okay for us to take a mosque and convert it to a church. For this is called hypocrisy. And this is why a human being, when he tried to play stupid, he fit perfectly there. And I say thank you for being stupid for today. We need some fun. Now we go back to the topic. Somebody saying, CP, you worship a pagan man. Well, you can say as you wish. You, what, what do you worship? How we worship a pagan man when this man, he says, I am God. Mm -hmm. Pagan is people who worship idols, not a living being. So you are even stupid in choosing the description of my belief. Pagan is somebody worship idols and statues, not somebody worshiping a living being. However, I would like to see what is your belief so we can love together. The topic today is about the Quran is it preserved or the Quran is it changed? Uh, he said CP can answer, he will convert to Christianity. Okay, I will check his video to see so we can love. We need entertainment from time to time. Let us go back to the topic. Is the Quran preserved? Is the Quran preserved? I saw many Christians making videos, which is good videos, I mean, to prove a point that the Quran, when the Muslims they say, Quran is preserved, this is not true. It's a big fat joke. Actually, even the Quran say it clearly that the Quran was not preserved. Can you tell me who Jesus sacrificed himself? You see here, yeah, just to show you uh, uh, Muslim questions, how weird it is. I mean, how we can make an answer for the question if the question doesn't make sense. You see, this is this what, this, this is what happened when Muslim talk. Can you tell me who Jesus sacrificed himself to? You know what? I will go with you. You are a Muslim and you have a logic. Jesus, he sacrificed himself to. To who? To us. Who? He will save who? If I jump in the fire to save somebody inside the house, I sacrifice myself to who? To God or to you? So your question is stupid. However, it's very smart at the same time. Why? 
because I can ask you the same question which you cannot answer. When Allah He sent in the Quran a sacrifice in the time of Abraham, He sacrificed to who? Hmm? When Allah He sent from the heaven a sacrifice, and He called it a great sacrifice. Allah sacrificing to who? To Himself? Isn't this is your point? Your point is, if Jesus is God, he should not sacrifice himself to himself. But Jesus did not do that. He sacrificed himself to us. But in the Quran, it says, chapter 37, verse 107, Okay, Allah is sacrificing to who? Are you going to answer? No. Now what you will do, you will start scratching your head and your ears, and you play deaf, and you go to sleep, and you say, I heard nothing. He did not say anything to me, and the coward, he did not answer me. Allah sending sacrifice to who? Are you there, Mr. Stranger? To us, who, who is us? Oh, who, us. And you see, he, he, he don't hear me. Allah, he sacrificed to who? You see, Allah sacrificing a ram. Why Allah need to sacrifice a ram? To who? Jesus, he sacrificed himself to save us. And he made it clear, whoever believe in me, whatever I do to you, including my death, is the way to be saved. This is what the sacrifice is about. Same time, Jesus did not go to the cross and say, hey, kill me. He did not put his in the cross and he put a knife in his chest and he said, I'm going to kill myself. So you are being stupid here. They took him, they put him in the cross and he knew the future, he knew what would happen. So this is what the sacrifice is about. He is a hero who is willing to do whatever to save us. But he did not go on the cross and say, hey guys, come and put nails in here. My name is Jesus. I like to be sacrificed. Don't forget please to put more nails in my hands. Uh, and don't forget to shoot me with the arrow. So you are being funny and silly. And look, you are avoiding now the challenge I made for you. I explained to you about Jesus, but you can't explain to me about the Quran. Allah, he ransom to who, to who? Allah make a ransom to who? No answer. He will keep repeating the same question and he claimed that I did not answer him. Allah, when he sent a ransom, he ransom who from who? No answer. Right? This is why we laugh when the Muslims, they ask us questions about the Bible. It's very embarrassing to be a Muslim, actually. They kiss a black stone and yet they call us pagans. Bring tafsir of the verse. This is the tafsir I just gave it to you. What? Tafsir to the verse? This verse? Okay, give me. Uh, choose the tafsir for it. So we can laugh. The tafsir says that Allah, he sent the huge ram and the fire ate it. Okay, so Allah, he sent the fire to eat his own ransom? This is your logic. Allah is sacrificing to who? <laughs> anyway, stupidity is amazing. And you get certificate from me today. Now, we go back to the topic. The Quran is preserved or not preserved. You see, uh, Zakir and Naik, uh, all the Muslims, they have videos about the Quran is preserved. So uh, I'm not going to play the video, you can watch it. It's called, uh, what is the textual, uh, uh, like the, how authentic the text of the Quran? And this is Zakir Naik answering. And the guy, he asked him in the question, well, you know what? There is names who they are the master of recitation of the Quran. Uthman, he burned their books. Zakir Naik, he says, those are notes. Those are not Quran. Look at this stupid answer. Those are notes. The Quran became a note. So those people, they were writing notes, not Quran. But isn't it Uthman himself? He collected the notes of the Muslims. And he said that the Quran of Uthman is verified by who? By Muhammad? Muhammad was dead. Those are the names who Muhammad, he mentioned them to take the Quran from them. And then if we go, we will find that Muhammad even, he said, anyone he write any beside the Quran, he shall erase it. So they were writing Quran. They were not writing notes. Liars. And this is Sahih Hadith. So they were writing Quran, not notes. So why you burn them? Simply because they are different from each other. And just to show you how stupid this answer of Zakir Naik, 
But isn't it Muhammad, he says, Allah, he sent the Quran in seven reading, or seven letters, which means seven different Quran? What are they? And by the way, there's hundreds of Qurans, not seven readings only. Now we can show reference if there's a Muslim who want to challenge me. Right? What uh, 37? 37 is nothing. Now it looks like my internet is coming up and down. I hope it will have no problem. So there is more than, more than uh, I mean, uh, between 800 to 900 Quran, according to Muslim books. And if a Muslim want to challenge me, you can call me right now, and I can show you the reference from your Islamic books. However, the Quran itself, the Muslim, they claim that the Quran was remembered, memorized. But Muhammad himself, he forgot the Quran. Zakir Naik in the video, he says, the Prophet, he used to ask them, recite this verse for me, recite this chapter for me, and then he approve it or disapprove it. But as you see, it was the opposite. It was the opposite. Muhammad, when he pray, he forget even the Quran, and he skip Quran. A man said to him, Oh, Messenger of Allah, you omitted such and such verses. The Messenger of Allah said, S-A-W-S, this is like shortwave transmission. Why did not you remind me of it? So it was not Muhammad who was reminding Muslims of the Quran. It was the opposite. It was the Muslim correcting Muhammad, saying to him, You are a scam. You cannot even recite the chapter twice correctly. So how the one will verify the Quran for you? He himself, he needed somebody to verify the Quran for him. Do you see it? And not only that, the Quran itself says in chapter 87, verse number 6, We are going to recite for you and you will never forget. But we just show, we showed you that Muhammad, he forget Quran. But look what the Quran said. You shall not forget except as Allah wills. So the Quran confirmed that Muhammad will forget Quran. And why Muhammad he add this verse? All of us, we knew that Muhammad is the one who made Quran. Muhammad admitting here that we will give you Quran and you will not forget except what Allah will. So the Quran confirmed that Muhammad himself, he forget Quran. It's in front of you. Do you understand me? Do you see the, the, the proof? The Quran saying, except as Allah will. So you will not forget the Quran, except what Allah will. So Allah have a will that Muhammad himself forget Quran. And here you ask yourself, what a stupid religion this religion is. Why does God, when I give him Quran, make him forget it? You understand? If the Quran is preserved, then the Quran itself saying, no, it's not preserved. Allah, he made the Quran be forgotten, starting from Muhammad. And then we see tons of reference about Muhammad forgetting Quran. In chapter 2, verse 106, it says that Allah is going to cause you to forget the Quran. Why Allah want to cause us to forget the Quran? Have you ever heard of a stupid statement like this? I thought the Quran is preserved. And the Quran is that in the chest of the believers. But Allah in this, the Quran says the opposite. He says, okay, it's in your chest. I will cause you to forget it. So now how you can say that the Quran, which is preserved in your chest, is a preserved in the book? You are accusing Allah to be a liar because the Quran itself confirmed that Allah will cause you to forget the Quran. Which means you are saying Allah is a liar, the Quran is a fraud, and you prove the point again, starting from zero, that the Quran cannot be authentic. Because if this verse is authentic, that's been all the claim that the Quran is preserved is not authentic. So either we take what you say or we take what the Quran says and the Quran says it clearly, the Quran is not preserved. And then the Quran continues saying more stupid statement. This is why I say as a Christian, it's not for our benefit to prove the Quran to be uh, corrupt because the Quran, which is not corrupt as we see in the front of us as Muslim they claim, it's hilarious and stupid. So I like it this way. I love it this way. But we substitute something better or similar. Have you ever heard of a God? He sent the writing and then Allah, he changed his mind and he decided to make something better and send it back to you. Look like Allah, he was not good in a grammar. So he took a class in Arabic and then he decided to make better writing. So he sent it to you and he make you forget the letter before it because it was very embarrassing. 
How this is can be from God? Do you understand what I'm saying? The guy who his name is Yuri. He keeps saying call, call. Are you a Muslim, Mr. Yuri? Are you a Muslim? Why you keep saying call, call? Do you have a diarrhea? Anyone repeat the text more than one time, we will block you. Don't be, don't act like a kid. Now, uh, if we go more in the hadith, we will find Muhammad saying, Allah Apostle heard the man reciting the Quran at the night, and he said, hey, may Allah bestow his mercy on you, on him, as he has reminded me such and such verses and such and such surahs. Muhammad, he forgot the whole surahs. Which I caused to be forgotten. Do you see it? He was caused to be forgotten surahs. Muhammad, not, not only he confessed that he forgot verses, he forgot surahs. And this is Sahih Bukhari. They can't say this is Da'if. The game of Da'if doesn't work. Do you see it? So how the Quran is preserved if the one who gave you the Quran himself, he do not know the Quran. This is the most stupid book ever you can imagine. In different hadith, even Muhammad, he don't remember how many, how many uh, bowing down he should do. They told him, Prophet, did, did the prayer extend it or increased? <laughs> Muhammad, he said, why? He said, well, you did bow, bow down five times. <laughs> Muhammad is unaware what he's doing. But isn't it Allah is the one who make Muhammad do everything perfectly? So that we notice now, Muhammad did not know. He don't even remember how Muslims should pray. Muhammad don't remember the Quran, surahs and chapters. He forgot them totally. Muhammad, he ordered the Muslim to write Quran, not Hadith, and then they write Hadith which is showing me the sign of stupidity of the followers. Because if Muhammad, he says, don't write anything except the Quran. Read carefully. And this is Sahih Muslim, this is authentic. Don't take down anything from me. And he who took down anything from me except the Quran, he should efface it. Okay. Look how stupid this statement is. He just ordered them not to write the Hadith. And they wrote a Hadith saying, the Prophet said, don't write Hadith. Have you ever heard of stupidity more than this? He just said to them, don't write anything except the Quran. Then they write Hadith saying, the Prophet saying, don't write Hadith, write only Quran. I mean, how this is, can be origin of God? And what kind of a smart people they are? It's like, I am a doctor and I say to you, don't spit in the face of somebody because you will give him Corona. And then what do you do? You spit and you say, the Prophet said, Dr. Prophet Muhammad said, like a Mimi Hijab, uh, do you think Allah is God now because he spit? Stupid answer. Uh, he spit and he says, don't, the Prophet says, don't spit at people. But you just did spit. If you have a question, I did not see it, play it again. All right. So, for me, it's not really important to prove that the Quran is corrupt because this is stupid book, hilarious books. And you know, the Muslims, always they try to prove to us that the Quran is an amazing book. So they change that a different mood. You know, through centuries, they could not convince anyone that the Quran is from God. So now what, what they have, they have a new game as an example. The Muslim claim there is science in the Quran. Like as an example, as you see here, the solar apex, the Quran speak about solar apex. Yes, brother. The, the notion of the, city, the settled place of the sun is vividly described in the chapter of Yasin. Actually, the name of the chapter of Yasin itself is a proof that the Quran is made by a pagan man. Ya is a word meaning God. Sin is the name of the moon God. Yasin. 
And then they quote for us a chapter 36, verse number 38. The sun runs in its course to settled place. And that is the degree of the almighty, all-knowing Allah, supposedly, right? Okay. But this is their claim that this is about solar epics. But then we go and see what Muhammad, he explained the Quran. Look like the Muslims, they knew the Quran meaning more than Muhammad. Muhammad is an edict of the village. If we go in the hadith, we will find the following. Hmm? This is Muhammad explaining what that verse means. Let us see. Here we go. The same verse explained by Muhammad. What is the apex of the solar system? Muhammad was explaining the sun setting every day. Once I was with the Prophet in the mosque at the time of the sunset, the Prophet said, O oh, Abu Dhar, Abu Dhar, by the way, is the father of the ants. I mean, Muhammad companion, they have very funny names. One is the father Abu Huraira, the father of the cats. The other one is the father of the ants. No problem. And he did marry Zainab bin Tujash which means the daughter of the donkey, no problem. And his last name is Kilab, which means dogs, no problem. We have a zoo. Now, O oh Abu Dhar, do you know where the sun set? Abu Dhar, to make the Prophet happy, he had to say, oh no, nobody knows except you and Allah Prophet. Muhammad, he loved this. This is why he kept asking in such a term of questioning. He said, do you know? Do you know? And then the Muslim right away, the answer back, he says, I replied, Allah and his apostle knows best. Muhammad, he loved it when you say that. He like, he moved his tail and he's like so excited as a dog when the beef is coming. And he said, it goes and prostrate underneath Allah's throne. And that is Allah's statement. And the sun runs into a fixed course for a term and degree. And that is a degree of the almighty all-knowing. Chapter 36, verse number 38. But isn't this the same verse the Muslim they are using to prove to us scientific miracle? In their website, how the sun setting became the apex of solar. Isn't this the same exact verse? It is. Explained by Muhammad, the stupid Muhammad, he thinks the sun set every day. The sun is moving from the east to the west. That's what the verses mean. And Muhammad he explained it. But the Muhammadan, in order to fool you, because supposedly you do not know Arabic, and based on that, we can fool you, we can say whatever we wish. And there's many naive who do not know, they can be fooled. There's many people, they believe, read the Quran, have science. You know, I mean, you read this article, huh? okay, it says that. And then they say to you, subtle place, it's translation, the word mustaqar, which is indicate an exact appointment place and time. Modern astronomy confirmed that the solar system is indeed moving in a space at the rate of a 12 miles per second. Now we are talking about miles and second and astronomy. When Muhammad was talking about something totally hilarious and stupid, that the sun set in a murky water and the sun go under the throne of Allah, and that is the degree of Allah every day. And not only that, in different hadith, it says that Allah, the, the sun, ask Allah to go back. So do you see why we do not need really to prove the Quran to be corrupted? Because if you remember, many times it happened, there's many videos on YouTube, where Muslims, they say to me, I don't agree with this verse, this is corrupted. Okay, what he meant? He meant to say there's no way Allah will say such a stupid thing. So somebody, he played with the Quran, and this is the mistake of the one who corrupt the Quran. That's the mistake of Allah. So it's not for my benefit that the Muslims don't go in that direction. It's for my benefit if the Muslims agree that the Quran is not corrupted, so we can get them busted, and we laugh at the God of Islam, and we die laughing. In different place, Muhammad, he even explained the chapter 18 in the Quran, where he claimed clearly that the sun set in a muddy water, which is proven to be true, by the way. My grandfather, he saw it there, right? Muhammad here, he said, 
a game. I was behind the messenger of Allah who was riding a donkey, which uh, while the sun was setting, he asked, do you know where this, sun, where this set, talking about the sun? I replied, Allah and his apostle know best. He said it set in a spring of warm water, Hamia. Actually, Hamia means not only warm, mean boiling. Okay, now this is explanation for the Quran in chapter 18 where the Quran says that Alexander the Great, he found the sun setting in a murky, muddy, hot water. The Muslims, in order to cover the stupid statement in the Quran, they say, oh no, no, this is how he thought. Alexander the Great, he thought, but remember here, the one is talking is not even Alexander the Great. It was Allah supposedly telling Muhammad something nobody knows that Alexander the Great, he went all the way to the end of the world and he found where the sun sitting and he found it sitting in the murky water. You see here they ask him, they ask Muhammad, the Jews, they ask Muhammad, tell us about Zulqarnain. Muhammad the fool, the Jews always, they trap him. They made him believe that Zulqarnain is a prophet of God. So Muhammad now, he wanna tell us about a prophet of God who his name is Alexander the Great, who was a bisexual, and which is weird to make him a prophet, but it happened in Islam. Any famous man, if Muhammad he heard about Michael Jackson, he would put him in the Quran. All the names in the Quran are famous people, have nothing to do with Islam. Nothing to do with Islam. Famous names. They asked concerning Zulqarnain, say, I will rehearse to you something of his story. Okay, who is going to rehearse? Allah. Who is the one who is talking? Allah. Verily we establish his power in the earth. Who is the one who established the power? Allah. And he followed away. And then until he reached the sitting place of the sun. And he found it sitting in the murky spring. And look, the Muslims, they try to explain this. They say, oh, he's, when he went to the ocean, he saw the sun sitting in the ocean. But it doesn't even say the word ocean, you idiot. It says a spring. Since when the ocean is a spring? Is that something we do not know? Last time I saw the ocean, it was not spring at all. There was five gallons of water there. And then this guy, he changed direction and he found where the sun rise to. Until he came to the rising, uh, rising place of the sun, by the way, rising place of the sun. And he found, found it rising in people who had no, uh, provided no covering. And by the way, the Muslim, they make scientific miracle about this. They say this is about the ozone and this is in Alaska or the North Pole. Look at the stupid statement. I mean, they have no covering. That's mean they have no ozone. They have no, what is, what? They fabricate everything, switch it upside down. And then when we will go and read the interpretation, we will find that this is in Africa. Those people, they don't have a clothing and they sleep under the ground. Suddenly, Africa became in the North Pole, next to Santa Claus. So, and if you read this story, actually this story alone is enough to prove that the chapter 18 is the best chapter to prove to anyone that Muhammad is the biggest fraud ever. Look, people, they told him, Alexander the Great, uh, hey, please, can you build for us a dam between us and the people of Gog and Magog? Uh -huh. build a dam between us and them can they ever go around the dam I mean the story alone here is the most stupid story and according to Muslims Gog and Magog they are not a human you see they say here people but they are not a human those are special creatures to the point the ear of one of them is in the size of a tent and he sleep in it it's like watching a Harry Potter movie you know so Gog and Magog are not a human and each one of them before he died, he would have 1,000 baby, which means the average of those or percentage of those Gog and Magog and us is way higher. So if we are seven billions, they will be seven trillions. Where we can find them, we cannot. They are behind the dam. Okay, where this dam can be found, nobody can find it. And according to Muhammad, that the people of Gog and Magog, before the judgment day, they will dig a hole in the wall. Don't tell me which one which is the dam here built by Alexander the Great, and then they will be able to go through, and then they will invade the earth, brother. 
I mean, do I need to prove the Quran is corrupt? No, keep it as it is. It is hilarious. You know what I mean? Do I need really to prove the Quran is corrupt? Why I want to do that? I want to laugh at the Holy Quran. This is holy, brother. Brother, this is holy. Please don't say it's not holy, brother. Because if you say it's not holy, then everybody can say, oh, you know what? This is not holy book anyway. This is what the Muslim they do now with the Hadith. They say Da'if. So soon, because of us Christians keep saying the Quran is corrupt, they will say it's Da'if. This is Da'if verse. Any verse they don't like, they will say it's Da'if. Okay, Muslims, you know what? I will go with you. The Quran is preserved, brother. Okay, are the people of Gog and Magog preserved too? When we can find them as long as they are preserved, are they inside the jar or outside the jar? I mean, those are trillions by, th by, by, by size. And they will invade the whole earth and they are very aggressive. And if you read the Hadith Muhammad, he spoke about them. Tons of Hadith. And even Muhammad, he claimed that the Muslim will use the bows, the arrow and the shield of Gog and Magog as firewood for seven years. Brother, so in the judgment day, those Gog and Magog, they will use arrows. You cannot say it's metaphorical. As you see, they are use it, going to use it as a fuel. So, Muhammad, he never heard of missiles, airplanes, bombs. Gog and Magog, they will attack us by arrows. Hmm? And those Gog and Magog, until now, every day, they go and they try to dig a hole in the wall. Look at this hadith. Today, the wall, the barrier of Gog and Magog has been opened so much. The prophet is so worried. He woke up in the morning. He said, oh boy, oh boy. Today, they open one inch in the wall. Muhammad is making poopoo in his panty because in one inch, he opened his finger, man, you know, he, it's a small size. He is so worried. Even he says, like, a disaster happened to the Arab. Arab, are you ready? Today, the people of Gog and Magog, they open such a size of the wall. Read it. This is, this is Sahih al-Bukhari, peace upon him. The Prophet once come to her and statues of her, and then, and then he says, none has the right to be worshipped at Allah. We into the Arab. From the danger has come near, an opening has been made in the wall of Gog and Magog. This is a false prophecy. This is a prophecy claiming that soon Gog and Magog will attack, speaking specifically to the Arab because they are the only Muslims at that time. And then he opened a circle with his thumb. I mean, look how scary they are. If they open a, a, a space of a thumb, Muhammad is warning you. They are almost out, brother. Are you ready for Gog and Magog? If you are not ready, buy your funeral insurance. One of the most hilarious things I see in TV sometimes, like they put for you. Uh, you know, it's TV, it's not internet. 15 minute advertising. If you are between the age of 40 and whatever, our funeral service insurance buy now and like they go over and over and over I mean they are telling you like just like just die and don't worry I mean it's hilarious and this is Muhammad he is telling you just because they open little finger he's saying buy insurance worship Allah look they open a finger size in the wall they are coming they are going to bite us they will eat us alive Look, a circle in the size of my finger is open. Now what I can do? Muhammad is terrified. For what? For a hole in the size of his finger. So why we want to prove to them that the Quran is corrupt? This is hilarious. A religion who believe in such a garbage It's for your benefit, Christians, not to argue with Muslims that the Quran is corrupt. How you can, what the point of saying the Quran is corrupt if it is corrupt from the beginning? I mean, which corruption we'll talk about? You see, when you say the Quran is corrupt, 
as if we are saying there was a Quran. There was no Quran. This guy is an idiot. His name is Muhammad. He's a child molester, criminal, gang leader. He fabricates things. And look, always Muslim, they come to us, they avoid all the disaster we say, and they come to us with an answer, with a question. Look, look what he's worried about. He is not worried about the lies of his prophet of Gog and Magog, but he's worried about this seventh day. Can you explain to us one plus one plus one is equal to one? You see what he's worried about? He's not worried about the fraud of his prophet, putting his finger in his nose, taking boogers, and giving us a stupid statement about Gog and Magog and all the fabrication of the sun set in murky water, the sun go and ask Allah, the sun go under the throne of Allah, the sun moving from the east to the west, all of this is stupidity. But now he is a person of logic. How one plus one plus one is equal to one? Let me ask you, Mr. Donkey, who is the one who believe in one plus one plus one plus one is equal to one? Can you give me his name? You are a certified donkey. I will go with you. As long as you are the person who says one plus one plus one is equal to one, explain. Well, how you Muslims, you say that Allah is one, and then Allah, he says, if you want to take a partner, we will take it from ourselves. Allah will take a partner from ourselves who? One plus one plus one plus one is one? Or what about the Quran? And you Muslim believe that the Quran is not created. So the Quran is not created. Allah is not created. The partner of Allah is not created. But they are one? They are not one. Is Quran is and Allah is one? No. Okay, Quran is not created. So now we have to divine. Because anything is not created by God, He is God. Anything is exist by itself. Without action of God, Obviously, he is divine. This is what God is. So they try to change the topic. They have no answer for the stupidity of their prophet. And now they, they give us a stupid question. One plus one plus one. We, no Christian believe in one plus one plus one. We believe in one God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit is one God. We don't we believe in one plus one plus one. Idiot. Can you show me one place the Christian, they believe in such a garbage you are saying? Isn't it Jesus says, worship your God alone? Oh, you don't mean it. Oh, okay. You don't mean it. I mean it then. The whole Bible says, worship your God alone. One of the most important command in the Bible, you worship all your Israel. You worship, you worship your God alone. Alone. Where is the three? We don't have three gods. We have one God. The Trinity is not the three gods. We don't believe in three gods. We believe in one God. And actually, if you ask Muslims, why Allah? Look, if you read the Quran, you will see the Muslim says, read with me. And we ransomed him. You ask the Muslims, why Allah say we? Isn't he one? They say, oh, you know, Allah, he say we because it's majestic. Okay, I will go with you. So it is majestic to be many, not one. Are you listening, Christians? Ask any Muslim, why you say we? They say, oh, he, we is like majestic because he's, he's big, he's, he's God. Okay, so God cannot be respected unless he is we. Do you see the stupidity? So they practice the we, God, to make their God, we, 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 we. But we are the one who have God in three person is a problem for them, but they are the one who have a fake we. This is a fake we, because you are adding fake we in the front of one to make him majestic. Are you getting my point? What kind of God he will become high by adding we? I mean, what happened if you add I? What is the problem? No, brother, he is high, so he have to say we. I mean, this is the most stupid we ever. If making God more respected by adding we, well, it's more respected then make more sense that God is the Son, God is the Father, God is the Holy Spirit. And this is real we, but it is one.
You have a fake we. You are adding a fake we in front of one God when he is not we. And your we, we God, who is a yo-yo, who come every day from the third part of the night, which is very funny, we. I mean, what kind of God you need to come every day in the third part of the night as a yo-yo? To what? So he can hear your prayer. If you remember the, the video I played a few days ago, when a Muslim asked a sheikh, and the sheikh, he said to him, I find your question is disturbing. What was the question? He said to him, how Allah come down every third part of the night if the earth is a flat and we have many time zone? What the sheikh, he said? I find your question is disturbing. Are you comparing how Allah, he descend like us? <laughs> Allah, he descend like us, like us, all over me. So they cannot answer about their God being a yo-yo. They cannot answer about their God is we. And we will make him majestic as if God need we to be majestic. So we need to play with words to make God respected. And God himself, he need the we so he can be respected. Otherwise, nobody will respect him. That is the most stupid statement. King is a king. He add we or not, he is the king, correct? People bow down to the king. Who need the we? Those who add the we is somebody is trying to earn respect and he don't deserve it. So he add titles in the front of himself. But isn't it the best title is God? What, how higher we can go? Who need the we? Right? Anyway, so any Muslim have a comment? Any Muslim have a comment? Anyone he have an opposition for the wee wee? Hmm? I am wrong. How I am wrong? Okay, why you are? Why are Allah saying weak? Tell me. Why Allah saying we if he is one? Explain to me, I'm listening, I'm wrong. Why Allah he say we? All the Quran, we, 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 look, look how many we. And we left, and we gave him. And we, 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 this is all is we, and we helped him. And we delivered them. Who? And we left. All of this is we, for what? Why does God is stuck with we? Do you have an answer, Mr. You are wrong? Or this is the only word you know, yeah, you are wrong. Hmm? Any Muslim can tell us? What is this we? After I go offline, all the Muslims will become heroes and they will give me all the funny answers which is have nothing to do with our topic you just watch the for the comment the muslim they in the comment they speak about everything except the topic do you know brother that the bible order to kill infant brother brother the term the bible is corrupted and we can prove it very easy and then he quote for us that jesus said the truth will set you free. I mean, the Bible is corrupted and he called for us, the truth will set you free. He said, Jesus, a peace upon him. He said, the truth will set you free. But isn't it, this is the corrupted Bible, so how you read it? Corrupted people. The follower of the God, we. Pagans, black, black stone kissers. You know, when you, when you talk to a Muslim, he will say to you, the Christians are pagans. Really? Why? What what make us pagan? Why? Tell us, please. Do we go around a stone? Do we bone in the front of a stone in the shape of a private part of a woman? Do we believe that this stone is going to witness for us in the judgment day? 
Do we believe that the stone will have a tongue and eyes, which is very sexy and you know it? Hmm? We don't. It's you who do that. Do we kiss a stone and we lick it and Corona will be happy with it? And now the Kaaba is totally empty. Where is Allah? Isn't it your prophet who says that no plague will enter Mecca or Medina? Hmm? Where, what happened the prophet who prophesied that Allah, he preserved Mecca and Medina by the angels? And why now the Kaaba is empty? And actually the funny, right after Muhammad death, Muslims were dying in the city of Medina by a plague by thousands. Once I was in Medina and uh, there was an outbreak of disease and the people were dying rapidly. But Muhammad, he promised them, no plague can enter Medina, brother. The angels are protecting the Medina. I was sitting with Omar and the funeral passing, uh, 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 like going through, passing by. And the people raised, appraised the diseased. Omar said, it has been affirmed paradise. Oh, those people died by the plague, they will go paradise. Okay, but where is the promise of Mecca will not be infected with such a disease? Look, all those hadith confirm the same. People dying. Even the ruler of Syria, the Muslim, he died in, in, in disease. I mean, tens of thousands. There's a fool. His name is James White. He says, the Muslims' uh, land was saved from the plague. I mean, this guy was an idiot when he talked. He made me, you know, die laughing at his stupidity. Who told you that the Muslim towns was saved from the plague, you idiot? Simply because nobody cared for them. What is written is the history of Europe, the history of civilization. Those people history, nobody read their history until now. Now we are reading the history for you. But who said to you they are saved from the plague? And this is exactly what happened now. In the USA, there's more than 100,000 people die from Corona, supposedly. But in Iran, there's 5,000 only die. But the president just two days ago, he made a mistake. He said that 20 million people, they have corona in Europe. 20, 25 million. Let me search, search for it. They hide, they lie. People are dying from corona everywhere. There is a new news in the news about what happened in Islamic countries. Because nobody cares. Let us see. I'm trying to find the news in English eh, because I saw it in Arabic. Eh, here we go. We found it. Look at this. I mean, who in the world would believe that 25 million infected with Corona and then only 5,000 did die? Who want to believe in this garbage? 25 million. I mean, this is the quarter of the population of Iran, which means from every four, there's a guy, he have a corona. <laughs> you know what I mean? But then there's only 5,000 5, people die. This is Islam. And this guy, he made a mistake by saying that, by the way. He exposed the, 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 the Iranian, they are angry from him because they are trying to hide in the news. Like we have uh, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 25 million. He's like Joe Biden, you know, he cannot keep the water mirror inside his belly. So everybody have to know. So 25 million, but nobody died in Corona in Iran. 
In the USA, we have a million and 100,000, I don't know how many the, the, the total cases, and 100,000 people die. So how come the, the because they are they lie, here they don't. I mean, if every, if a 25 million, what is the population of Iran, 100 million? That's mean all of them, they have Corona. Because if everyone, he go and he sit with his family, all of them, they have Corona, even if he stay home. Does it mean the whole country have Corona? Anyway, I hope we have a good time. Uh, I know today, like I came in a time which usually I don't do, but we just to give a time and chance for people from different location, different territory to do, join us live on air. Uh, we say thank you for being with us. I hope you did learn how to refute the Abdul. Abdulism as a cult is nothing but a pagan cult. Those people, they kiss stones. They born in front of stones. And they believe stones is the right hand of Allah. And if a Muslim want to say to me, I'm lying, I challenge you to prove me wrong. All Muslims who claim to be scholars, mullahs, big beard, small beard, are welcome to challenge me to debate. But don't tell me, please, debate face to face. This is the face to face as to us as a stupid claim because you are making it because simply you don't want to debate me. Everyone knows I do it in the internet. Face to face is the guy who want to run away and he want to find an excuse. Face to face is Abdulism, cowardness. It's like Hamas. Hamas, they say to the Jews, Come to us face to face if you are a man. When the Jews come in the ground, Hamas disappear. I remember once when the, the Israeli, they landed in Beirut and they captured a leader of Hezbollah. Imagine the Israeli, they landed with their dogs. I mean, it's like going to a, for, a, for a picnic. They landed down in the highway with their dogs. They took the guy from the car. They put him in the helicopter. They went in the sky, disappear. Not a single bullet from the Mujahideen. After the Israeli disappear for more than half hour, suddenly everybody is shooting. What happened? Where your gun was when the Israeli was in the highway with their dogs? Huh? Hezbollah, Amal, all those, you know, this garbage. Where were you? when the Jews, they were in the ground, capturing your mullah. They put him in a black plastic bag, and they put him in the airplane, and they took him. After the guys they arrived to Tel Aviv, and then they start shooting in Beirut. Shooting at who? At Allah. This is how face-to-face -face work with them. Right? We know you're face-to-face. When you are weak, they gang against you. If you are alone, they gang against you to conquer you. This is why we Christian, we should not be divided. For divide is the best way to conquer. And the devil, he knew that. So you Christians, if you really love the Messiah, your Lord, your Savior, you should love each other. We love the Muslims, but love to each other is way more important. Why? Because if we cannot love our brother in Christ, how we can love the Muslim? How we can be good to the Muslim if we cannot be good to each other? How we Christians, we can be Christians without being a Christians. And to be Christian, start from you doing as the Lord he said. No Protestant, no Orthodox, no Catholic. I am a Christian. Christian is not a name was given to put in the shelf. It's a name belonged to Christ. He is a Christ, and I am a Christian. Do you have better name than this name to call yourself with? So why you want to call yourself Protestant? Why you want to call yourself Orthodox? Why you want to call yourself Catholic? Can't you call yourself by the name of your Lord? Do we have a better name? Unite, my friend. Unite. You see, one of the things those Abdulism, they hate about me, 
they can't play the game of Catholic and Protestant in my channel. For here we are united. Anyone he tried to divide us, we kick him out. We send him free shipping and hand it into Allah. We are united by him. No Greek, no Hebrew, no free, no slave. For all of us, we are one in his name. So it doesn't matter where are you from. You are Asian, you are white, you are black. Racism will be destroyed by the love of Christ. Hatred will be destroyed by the love of Christ. And if you do not know how to love your brother in Christ, you do not know Christ yet. For he ordered you to love your enemy. So how about your brother in Christ? The one who believes in God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. If you cannot love him, you don't belong to him. For loving them is loving me, the Lord said. When the Lord, he says, I was hungry and you feeded me. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was a prisoner, you came to me. They said, Lord, where, when we did that to you? He said, when you do it to my brothers, you do it to me. That is a Christianity, my friend. It's not just a sentence you read. It's not a prayer you repeat. We are not hypocrites like the Muhammadan, the Abdulism. Who repeat five time prayer mean nothing except cursing the Christian and the Jews. We are people who pray for the Muslims. We pray for their health. We pray for them to have a good life. We don't pray for the destruction. That is the Messiah. Anything else from the devil. The father of all lies is the devil. And Islam is coming from the devil. And no question about that. For it teaches nothing but hatred and violence. It's a cult of the devil. To fight the cult of the devil, hatred, the only and the best way is the love of the Messiah. From their fruits, you shall know them. The Lord, he said. And with this, I say, may the Lord bless you. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. We appreciate, and by the way, I say, I say thank you for those who sent me emails during the time I was away. My modem was dead, but very nice of many of you to post in my Patreon. And thank you for those who they make donations there too to support our mission. We appreciate you. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And we prove it every day. See you soon.